What's up everybody, Arctic Platypus here. I'm gonna bring you another video about the future of DLCs in Battlefield 1. I already did a video about um, the future weapons of the f confirmed DLCs at the moment, which are the French and the Russian DLCs. Um, and there's a video on the weapons that might be in those DLCs. But now I wanna talk about what the other two DLCs might be. Um, and I have some ideas here and some potential weapons and map locations that might be in each of these options. Okay, so let's just go right into it. I think it's quite likely that we'll see the Anzac forces and the Canadian forces in a DLC. Um, the Anzacs were the Australians and the New Zealanders who were brought in by the British to fight. Um, even though World War One really didn't pertain to the Australians or the New Zealanders. And same with the Canadians. They were brought in by the British because they were colonized by the British. So, um, I mean, there's not a lot of weapons that would be added in this DLC that I can find, at least. I mean, they would definitely add the Ross Rifle, which was a Canadian bolt-action weapon. And, uh, I mean, most Canadians still ended up using the SMLE, the Lee Enfield, but the Ross rifle was used quite a bit during the war. It was equipped with scopes. I mean, it was um, it was definitely used by the Canadians, and I, I honestly could not find any weapons used by the um, the Anzacs, or I mean, weapon I mean weapons invented by the Australians or the New Zealanders. Um, both the Canadians and the Anzac forces used a lot of British weapons, so they could potentially add new British weapons into the game, such as the Farquhar Hill Rifle, and I've been wanting this gun in the game for a very long time. It's a semi-automatic weapon with, I think, I believe a 20-round drum magazine. I'm not entirely positive on that. Um, and it was, yeah, it's a British weapon. It was used in aircraft it was intended to be implemented into ground units, but mainly was just an aircraft gun prior to the uh, advancement of machine guns in the aircrafts. Um, and the uh, the locations that are likely for this DLC, this potential Aust Australian, New Zealand, Canadian DLC, uh, would probably be the Battle of Gallipoli, um, which was featured in the single player campaign, if you guys played that. Um, and they could probably reuse the same maps from the single player, or parts of the map, and stuff like that. They had a really cool fort. I mean, there's a lot of options they could use. They could throw that stuff in there. That would be really cool, in my opinion. Um, and I, I think it'd be pretty likely that we'll see one of these DLCs. And that's just one of the options, and I don't really have all the information that, that it might uh, include, but that would be really awesome to see that as a DLC, in my opinion. Um, another thing would be uh, a potential Pacific DLC taking place in the Pacific near Japan, and it would include the Jap Japanese forces, and that would add quite a few new weapons. Um, I mean, they could definitely add the Nambu pistol, and if you've played any World War II games, you might have seen this pistol. It's been used, or it was used from 1906 to 1945. Um, very low caliber weapon, 8 round box magazine, um, probably would equate to many of the fast firing uh, pistols in Battlefield 1 already. They could also put the Type 26 revolver in there, um, which is just a generic Japanese revolver. Um, they could put the Type 38 Arasaka which is a bolt-action weapon. They could put that in there. Um, and then for a semi-automatic rifle, they might want to put the Liu rifle, which was a, an experimental semi-automatic rifle uh, from China. So, I mean, they could probably include it in here. I don't know, it's not exactly accurate, but if they wanted to put a semi-automatic weapon in here, that would probably be a, the best option, in my opinion. Um, and then probably no SMGs, shotguns, but uh, it would definitely, the maps would have a lot more options for boat usage. It would probably be something like the Naval Strike DLC in Battlefield 4, 
you'd have a lot of exotic locations. It'd be kind of interesting. A lot, definitely a lot of water, more jungly kind of setting in some of the maps. That'd be kind of fun. Although, historically, the Japanese really didn't have that much involvement, but they did fight the Germans. They tried to take over um, the, some of the land that the Germans occupied near Japan. Um, and then... So th that was two options for a DLC, and since I really don't know what the last two DLCs could be, um, there's a potential... I just... I was reading around and someone uh, suggested a post-World War I DLC, and this would open the gates for so many new weapons in the game. Um, and I know it's not accurate, I mean, there was no combat that anyone's aware of, that occurred after World War One, but the idea is it could be like um, underground kind of combat, really secretive. And I know it's not historically accurate, but it would be really cool. You'd have a lot of awesome weapons that don't make it into um, actual World War One, and you could have. There's an experimental Thompson submachine gun that you could have. It just it would be like kind of a few years extending past 1918, and you could have prototype semi semi-automatic rifles. A lot more of those, um, such as the Peterson rifle, not the Peterson device, but a full-on rifle. Um, there's just many many guns and vehicles that could be included in a DLC like this. Although my only concern would be that knowing what DLCs have been in the past Battlefield games, these weapons would be available in the normal maps, the non-futuristic um, maps, which would be uh, really strange, I mean, to say the least. It wouldn't make sense to be playing in a normal map like Sinai Desert, running around with a prototype Thompson. So, if they figured out a way to restrict something like that, that would be pretty interesting. That would be kind of cool. Um, but, I mean, I'm just thinking this DLC, it's probably a far, far-fetched idea, but if they implemented it, it could be something like Final Stand. They could have vehicles that are exclusive to those maps, and I would probably recommend them doing weapons exclusive to those maps, too. But... I mean, it's not realistic, and it probably won't happen. Uh, that's, I just think that's a kind of a cool idea. You'd have a lot more weapons to be using. Um, but yeah, that's my ideas and just thoughts on the future DLCs, the not the non-Russian and French DLCs. Um, if you guys enjoyed this these concepts the weapons that I've mentioned and all that kind of stuff, please leave a like, subscribe, whatever you want. But I just thought I would produce this video, give you some ideas on what might be in the future of Battlefield 1. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day.